budget, so I won't belabor that. I will tell you that later you're going to have in your packet a, um, a uh, opportunity to approve a uh, continued contractual relationship with Sodexo. Um, we had, we put out an RFP this year. Have checks tonight, John? Yeah. I'll <laughs> try, try to, try to. Those have nothing to do with each other. Uh, we, we followed the uh, RFP process strictly. And um, so as part of that RFP process, we had three Chartwells, uh, Avions, and Sodexo attend a walkthrough. Uh, Sodexo was actually the only organization that submitted a proposal. And it was a very thorough and uh, fantastic proposal. And so I'm really excited to present to you tonight the opportunity to um, extend that relationship with them. The $5 million that you see in there is a big number. As you know, that's fully paid either through um, uh, free and reduced reimbursements or actual um, child payments to the district for meals. So it's a, it's a daunting number, but it's one that's balanced by income. I have a question about uh, tonight's agenda. This is probably a good time to take it. Okay. Um, um, I noticed we received a memo that you have had some uh, decisions made by the insurance committee that included some uh, changes in the amount that would be uh, paid to the uh, various employees. Plus, I noticed there's some additional <coughs> benefits that are part of the package. Um, where are we voting to approve that? Recommendations for plan changes go to the superintendent for approval. Fund balance changes go to the board. So that's actually a superintendent um, a decision to actually make plan changes. Uh, that's in accordance with the contract. But in, in the course of the budget amendment, that uh, includes the fund changes. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, there, there is no fund balance change. So. Uh, there were two things that actually happened this year. So part of the amendment to this year's budget, which you voted on at the last board meeting, was to do that 60, on average, a 60 some dollar rebate back to employees yeah. for um, not savings this year, but not spending as high to the budget as we had originally anticipated. Um, actually, next year, because all of our association employees are going from a 7% contribution to a 10% contribution by contract, they are scheduled, they were scheduled to go up 42% in their monthly premium contribution just from the 7 to the 10. And that's actually about a 33% increase rather than a 42. And that is because we were able to have some, some lower than anticipated spending on the insurance plan. Uh, the changes were both uh, additional cost and some savings, so it's about neutral. So the addition of the um, massage therapy, the addition of the um, uh, Weight Watchers program, and I'm missing the third one. Sure. Orthodontia. Orthodontia, which is a big one. I'm not thinking because I already paid for that years ago. Um, our, our net costs, obviously, to this. Oh, and the other one is opposite sex domestic partner coverage. And then that's offset by the change in the out of pocket maximums. Um, that committee had committed several years ago to staying in line with OEB plans. Um, so we adopted all of the OEB, uh, current OEB plans today, including those items that I just mentioned. Um, it still puts us a year behind. OEB is actually doubling their out of pocket maximums for their the employees in OEB. I think that's pretty austere, so we're not we're not looking at that. But this puts us uh, in uh, uh, the opportunity to remain stable and, and affordable on our medical plan. And but it is in the budget. I mean, we budgeted for the the adopted budget or the if you looked at the proposed budget and then the approved <coughs> budget by committee, and then there were some changes. Remember in red ink on that one roll forward page. Um, yes, uh, I do. What I mentioned on page uh, 10. So the last item on there was reduce, reduce health insurance expense by $400,000. Well, 
Well, I certainly appreciate the lowering of the expenses for insurance. My problem is that this is one of the most significant expenses we face as a district, and yet I find that the board has relatively little to say about what is offered and what is uh, provided and, and, and what is uh, perhaps taken away. And um, I, I, I have expressed my frustration on this in the past. I, I personally believe there ought to be a liaison on the, on the insurance committee, on the board, and I think that that which comes before the, that the committee has uh, determined needs to go beyond the superintendent's passage. Now, this is one thing for future negotiation. I recognize this isn't going to be my bailiwick, but I just want to put it out there that this is such an extraordinary expense that it's, um, well, it's, it's the richest uh, insurance plan in the state. No question about it. Not true. And uh, it's a very nice plan. I have no problem with us getting that. I think it's great for our employees, and it's great for our community. But at the same time, I think that this is going to be a big issue down the road, especially as we start butting up against the uh, Affordable Care Act and some of the expenses that's, that that's going to raise. So I just uh, think it's time to uh, give some thought as to whether or not the board should be more actively involved in this. Should be. Well, your points were wrong. Um, it is about 12% of our annual you know, budget. That's very significant, and, and uh, we don't take that lightly. Affordable Care Act actually is what's driving us to make plan changes. If we don't make plan changes, we will hit the Cadillac uh, uh, plan uh, tax, and then that'll end up costing us more. So that was part of the reason to make uh, continued plan changes. And also, we have to be within a certain percentage of OLEV, right, uh, in order to avoid being forced into OLEV? Well, we, for years, we had to be at least 2% um, better uh, cost-wise relative to OEM. The legislation in the last um, legislative session removed that comparison requirement. The district can ask to have that comparison done um, if they wish to. Um, we are constantly doing that comparison. I mean, at the point where it would be less expensive for us to go into OEM relative to the self-funding that we currently have, we would bring that up in the insurance committee to discuss it. It's currently more favorable to, for us to stay self-funded. I think that our costs are probably running just a small percentage under OEB, over the two, but, but um, under. But our plan is much, much better than what you can get in OEB. So do you have any kind of estimate on terms of the budget when you added uh, opposite sex domestic partners? Do you think we're going to have more come on, less come on? That's a really tough question. So yes, we will pick up some members. There's no way to quantify that. I think that it depends on uh, the individuals and what their significant other uh, has for coverage at their employer and whether it, I mean, it's the same decision anybody would make that's a uh, same-sex domestic partners or they just have, I mean, they could just give you a name about it, right? Yes, they sign an affidavit saying that this person is uh, you know, my domestic partner some tie-ins to their own uh, income, so it kind of keeps people honest. And are there checks periodically to see if there's still uh, domestic partners? It's really just a, an honor system, if you will, but my understanding is that um, <coughs> there's some imputed income issues potentially on your tax returns that would prevent somebody from just picking a roommate and saying, I'm going to pay for my roommate's medical it would impact their tax situation. Good morning. Sure. Um, how many 